my learning strategy students. So today, um, I'm, this video is to help you fill in your assistive technology notes, which is, will be your study guide for our assistive technology unit test, which will take place next week in class. Um, so let's get started. Um, this uh, assignment is in Google Classroom under Unit 2B, Assistive Technology, and it's called Assistive Technology Notes. Please open uh, the uh, assignment, uh, the document for assistive, te te assistive Technology Notes, which will look, maybe, like this. So the notes will look like this. And then you'll see on here there are yellow um, blanks. That that's the those are the items that you will fill in. We covered 35 different tools in this unit, and um, so there's a lot of stuff. But there are short things that you have to fill in. Remember, you could fill it in by typing. You can use word prediction, or you can use voice typing to fill in the blanks. Here's also another tip: if you just click anywhere in the yellow blank and double click, uh, it will select the whole. Um, line and then you just start typing over it or voice typing or word prediction over it okay so I'm gonna bring up the master document that we're gonna fill in together okay so let's get started you remember you could pause if I'm going too fast you could pause so you have more time to copy it to your notes and um, you could also skip down if you you already started the notes in class Okay, all right, so assistive technology is te any technology or tool that is available to assist individuals to participate in activities and tasks. So this could be anything, it's a wide variety of things from something as simple as a pencil grip to something as complicated as a um, motorized wheelchair for somebody who cannot move at all. And in, in the middle there is uh, technology tools that we've talked about in class for uh, people, specifically for learning disabled people. Um, assistive technology tools is not limited to people with disabilities. Um, if you think of GPS, GPS is also assistive technology because it is assisting us getting from one place to another. So it's any kind of helping kind of tool. The, there's the main areas of tools that we're talking about are reading tools, writing tools, attention tools, organization and time management tools, memory and studying tools, and math tools. And those are the kind of tools we talked about over this unit. Um, and when we talk about tools for us here at Lawrence School, these are the main areas that we are focusing on and what kind of different learning disabilities uh, that we are supporting. So we're going to talk about dyslexia, dysgraphia, dyscalculia, which I know some people say it differently. That's okay. Executive function disorder, attention deficit disorder, visual processing disorder. So what are those? So the first one here is dyslexia. Dyslexia is a specific learning disability related to reading. It's uh, mainly a, a problem with reading accurately and fluently, which means you're not putting how much effort you have to put in to reading. Uh, people with dyslexia usually are putting much more effort into reading than people who don't have dyslexia. And so it's adding more processing time, it's adding more effort on your brain, and uh, it's gonna fatigue you more by reading. Um, and if we look at the word dyslexia here, we can really look, it's actually based on some um, Latin words. So the first part, dis, is actually um, a, word, uh, a suffix that means disorder or disability. And then the uh, root word is lexia. Lexia is also another Latin word, and that has to do with either book or reading. Um, so by putting those together, that's all we have. We know this is a problem with reading, okay? So the next word is dysgraphia. Again, dis, or there's a problem. Graphia means writing, handwriting specifically. So this is a specific lear learning disability related to writing, mainly with writing, handwriting legibly and at age appropriate speeds, as well as how much effort you have to put into reading, uh, to writing, I'm sorry. So for instance, I am dysgraphic and 
to this day, like even writing on the board, even though I could do it and it's not horrible, I have to put a whole lot of effort into writing on the board. Um, which really frustrates me and fatigues me to do that. That's why I don't really handwrite a lot anymore. I prefer to type or use voice typing for most of my handwriting needs um, because it's it's problematic for me to handwrite. Um, dysgraphia can also be associated with regular writing skills, even when you're typing. Um, dyscalculia or dyscalculia. Um, is a specific learning disability related to math. So if you think of calculia uh, as like a calculator, that's how I think of math. And it's mainly understanding the different rela um, number concepts that I talked about in class. There's 26 areas of math you could actually have problems with to be considered dyscalculia. Um, and it it's not like you don't have to have all 26, but you have, could have a mix or just one or two of those. Um, but it's usually number related concepts or using those num symbols and functions to be successful at math. And again, going into how much effort you have to put into completing math tasks. Executive function disorder is a, a very common learning disability, especially if you already have one of the other ones. Um, it's difficulty in organizing oneself to accomplish tasks with issues specifically related to organization, time management, prioritizing, and attention. Uh, so kids with executive function disorder or adults um, usually have problems with being places on time, forgetting about stuff, um, being wildly disorganized, having trouble like knowing where to start if there's like a lot of things they need to do and sometimes paying attention. Um, so all those things are kind of related. And again, if you mix that with dyslexia or dysgraphia or dyscalculia, like it could be a problem. Um, and a lot of kids who ha uh, have attention deficit disorder also have executive functioning disorder. You could have one with the, the, the other, but they also a lot of times go hand in hand. Attention deficit disorder, uh, known as ADD or ADHD, is character or characterized by inattention, which is kind of a misnomer, <laughs> uh, hyperactivity and impulsivity. And what I've learned over the years and from my research and just working with students here is it's not inattention, it's inattention to what you should be paying attention to. You're really paying attention to something else, something else in your brain, in the room, on your desk, in your pocket, like something else is keeping your focus off of what you should be doing right now. Uh, so it's a, it's not inattention, it's attention to the wrong things. Um, and uh, the last one is visual processing disorder. And visual processing disorder is difficulty in processing or interpreting visual information. Uh, and, and that is like shapes and words on a page. And what I mean by that is it's have, it having the combinations of those things. If you have words and pictures and shapes, think of a map in a textbook. Um, for somebody with visual processing disorder or a VPD, like that is just overwhelming amount of information that they have to pay attention to. And sometimes for some people, uh, visual processing disorder, it's too much and they can't figure out what to focus on. Um, and so sometimes, um, if you've ever seen a Prezi, like in Mr. Kaminsky's room or with Ms. Holtz, um, like it's a big map, a big poster that you're zooming in and out of specific parts of it to get different information. For somebody, I had a student several years ago who had VPD, and um, when I was showing it in this Prezi in class and zooming in and out, it was just almost overwhelming to him. Like he was having a real big struggle with it because his it was too much information for his brain to process at one time. So usually I try to encourage teachers to like, if you're doing this, but I like to do slideshows instead, like focus on just text on the page or a picture, but not text and a picture at the same time, because that's almost too much information for somebody to get, not get overwhelmed by all that. Um, so things like maps could sometimes be a struggle. Um, so those are the main six learning disabilities that we're kind of looking at tools that will help accommodate them and support them when they're learning. 
So let's talk about different tools. So the first one is annotation. Annotation um, is a word that comes up a lot, so I thought it was important to know what it means. It means adding to a document that is normally unchangeable, like a PDF or a picture, like a worksheet that you're going to fill in on top of, but not actually change the document itself. So you're adding stuff like on a layer on top of the document. Um, so OrbitNote and OneNote are both really good at allowing you to annotate documents. So you're not changing the original document, you're adding stuff on top of it, like on a separate layer. Um, Bookshare is one we really didn't talk about in class, but you should know about because some of you guys are eligible for Bookshare, might have accounts for Bookshare, or will soon have an account for Bookshare. Uh, Bookshare is a service that al uh, allows people with dyslexia and other reading disabilities, including visual impairments, so people who are blind, uh, to have free access to digital versions of books. Um, and this is important because it's funded by the federal government. And as long as you're a student somewhere, you will have access to Bookshare if you're eligible for it. People with ADHD or even VPD may not be eligible for Bookshare unless they also have dyslexia or some other reading issue. Um, so I will let you know if you're not sure if you're going to be eligible for Bookshare. Um, but it's free books and books are expensive. So this allows you to get them and you can listen to those books then with tools like Read and Write from Google and other tools out there on the internet. Equatio is a tool that helps you write math equations in Google Docs. And uh, it has, uh, we talked about this tool in class, we practiced it. It helps you read and write math. It doesn't solve the problem for you. The next tool is Google Calendar. And Google Calendar or similar tools out there are really great because they're cloud-based calendar tools that sync across devices and can be shared with other people. And this is really important for people exec who have executive function issues um, and poor time management issues because it helps you make sure you're where you're supposed to be. Um, so any calendar tool, but especially Google Calendar is a really good tool. A Google Keep is a checklist, a checklist post-it note tool. So this is great for post-it note people who need little reminders because it syncs across devices. It's, it syncs across devices and it all the reminders that you set in it can be set in Google Calendar. And remember this one, you could also set a reminder based on location, which so, so when you get to a specific place, it will remind you when you get there that you have to do something, which is awesome. I love Google Keep. Uh, Google Tasks is another to-do list tool in Google that syncs with Google Calendar. And again, it syncs across devices as well. And that's what we use for assignment notebook, but this is great to keep track of to-do lists. Google voice typing is a tool that allows you to dictate into Google Docs and it will type for you. So even if you have a personal account with Google, you will have Google voice typing. It is a free service with any Google account. You don't have to pay extra for it. And you get to it by going to, uh, in a Google Doc, you go to tools and voice typing, and then you click to turn it on, okay? Uh, Grammarly, and I'm talking about the website, the app is blocked here at school because it fights with the other apps. Um, Grammarly is a website that allows you to con contextually spell check and grammar check documents. What gra text contextually means is it's seeing how that word fits into the entire sentence, not just is that word correct. So it does a pretty good job of helping you spell check and grammar check your documents. And it's free, we use the free version. Immersive Reader is a Microsoft text-to-speech tool, so it'll read aloud your text to you. Um, and it will um, work in programs like Microsoft Word, but also OneNote. So you could listen to anything that you type or handwrite in OneNote with the Immersive Reader tool. And it's built, it's on the toolbar on the homepage in OneNote. Uh, that's what it looks like. Inspiration is a concept mapping tool that allows you to create top-down webs. And that's what the tool is made for. So it does a lot of things. It's really robust. 
The only downside of using Inspiration is that you have to use it on a Windows computer or a Mac computer, and you have to save it, <laughs> and you have to name it and put it in a location so you know where it's at so you could turn it in on Google Classroom. So like that part of it is a little more challenging for Inspiration, but once you get an Inspiration um, document open, it's really, really good, okay? Um, but it's to create top-down webs. The next tool is Learning Ally. Learning Ally is a web-based service that is a collection of human-read audiobooks with books available in classic audio, which means you'll only hear the book, or voice text, which means you're going to hear the book and see the words being highlighted at the same time. Learning Ally is great because you can use it on the web, on a Chromebook, in a Windows computer, on a Mac computer, on a tablet, Android or iOS, or a smartphone, Android or iOS. So it's very versatile. And um, you only need internet when you're using Learning Ally when you're downloading books to your device. So it's a really great tool. It's a paid service. We pay for all learning, uh, um, Lauren School students to have access to Learning Ally. If you were to buy it on your own, it's about $135 per year. So, but it's well worth it because it has about 80,000 books that you could choose from to use. So it's a very good tool. And it's actually the tool that students come back to Lauren School after they graduate, they say they use the most in college. So it is a good tool to start learning how to use now. Microsoft OneNote is note-taking software from Microsoft that allows you to ink and type notes, including writing math, because it has a built-in equation editor, and it could also help you solve math problems in OneNote as well. Um, it does a whole lot more, but OneNote is a great note-taking software. OrbitNote is um, a tool um, in Google Drive that allows you to view PDF documents and to listen to them as well as use other tools like dictionary highlighters and annotation tools so you could mark up that you could highlight, make notes, and do all that stuff in a document that you normally can't change like a PDF file. Postlight Reader extension. This is a free extension you could add through the Google Chrome Web Store and that simplifies your page that to eliminate distractions on web pages. So it gets rid of ads and stuff like that. It doesn't have a lot of like flexibility in how you want to change it, but it's a great free tool to get rid of the ads on a page to make it easier to read. This is great for people with ADHD, dyslexia, and also uh, executive or executive functioning um, disorder because it helps to kind of elim eliminate distractions and it helps you keep, eliminate the possibility of losing your place when you're reading. The next tool we're going to talk about is the Read and Write for Google toolbar. And this whole toolbar, um, to open it, this is an extension in Google Classroom that has the, the you open with the per purple puzzle piece and it will open the whole toolbar at the top of your screen. The toolbar, uh, once you open the purple puzzle piece, it'll open a toolbar that contains numerous assistive technology tools to allow you to work in Google Chrome, in, um, in Google Docs, and any website, including PDF files. And you could use readers, the reading tools on there, spell checkers, dictionary, all kinds of different tools, which we'll talk about more in a second. So this is the read and write toolbar, which is the whole toolbar. Let's talk about specific tools. So read and write for Google's check it tool, which looks like this, is a phonetic spell and grammar checker tool. And it's built to help correct words that dyslexics typically misspell words. It's not going to always get every dyslexic's misspellings, but common dyslexic misspellings word, uh, work. So it's a, and it works differently from Grammarly and the Google Doc Spell Checker. So it's a good, it's a good mix uh, to use two or three different spell checkers, especially if you have dyslexia or uh, spelling issues. 
use more than one spell checker and the check it tool is a very good one because uh, you're going to catch stuff on there that Grammarly or the Google spell checker will not find. Um, read and write for Google's dictionary tool, which looks like this, allows you to see and hear definitions of words that you click on. And you can listen to the definitions, which is really important. And you could also copy and paste the definitions into your document. The read and write hover speech tool, which looks like this, uh, only works when you're using read and write on the web outside of Google Docs or in Orbit Note. Um, you'll see this tool. And basically allows you to listen to digital text on um, wherever you're clicking your mouse. Uh, so it won't start at the top of the page and work down. It'll just click where or, or you're pointing your mouse to at that time. So it's very nice when you're on the web or in a PDF document that you can click around much easier to listen to what's there. Read and write picture dictionary tool allows you to select a word and then see a simple picture of a word. This is great for people who have uh, trouble visualizing, making that movie in their head when they're reading something. Because if you can't make the picture, uh, you can't make the movie. So if you look at simple pictures when you're learning new words, that can help you visualize that information so that you'll understand it easier. It is a definitely a reading comprehension strategy. Uh, the next one is the read and write for Google uh, reading tools. Uh, which is the play, pause, and stop button. And this allows you to listen to digital text with a computer voice reading it to you. There's a lot of different voices there, different accents, different languages. There's a lot of American languages there or US languages. Um, and then you could adjust how fast or slow it's reading as well. Read and write for Google's screen masking tool allows you to turn your mouse into a spotlight on your screen to help you focus your attention on specific parts of the document. This is really great for people who tend to get lost on the page when they're reading um, or, or are highly distracted by everything else going on, on the page. The read and write screenshot reader tool, which is this tool right here, allows you to listen to non-readable digital text with a computer voice. So imagine you're in a video game and it has a whole like page of instructions, but you struggle with the reading. You could actually use the read and write screenshot reader tool to say, read this, and it will figure out what it's saying and read it aloud to you. So uh, that's a really great tool. We don't have to use it as often anymore, but uh, it is a tool available for anybody who needs it. Read and write simplify tool, this one right here. Usually um, you're going to see this when you're using it on the web only, like if you're on an article on CNN or some other website. It allows you to turn that web page into a simpler view without ads, banners, or distractions. You could also change the font size, the font itself, to something a little more readable for you. And you could also change some color, uh, which is helpful for some people as well. Read and write study skills highlighters and the collect button. So it's these four highlighters, the delete highlights, and then collect highlights button. These are used to highlight information from websites or individual words that you could collect into a new Google Doc. Read and write. This is um, the study skill highlighter tools are also great when you're doing research on web pages. You just highlight the information, collect, boom, it pulls all the information over, including the citation information. So the website where you got the information from, which is awesome. Uh, read and write's talking type tool, which looks like a little headset. This is the speech to text tool on the read and write toolbar. Uh, if you're in a Google Doc, it's actually going to trigger Google Voice typing to open. I usually don't recommend you use it in a Google Doc because it kind of fights with Google Voice typing. But I do recommend talk and type when you're in Gmail or when you're in, on any other website. Uh, if, like if you're on a Kia um, essay question or if you're on another website, Google Forum that you need to fill out, you could use Read and Write's talk and type to dictate and I uh, have it type the words for you. Read and Write's vocabulary list tool. It's a combination of the highlighter tools 
plus this vocabulary tool that looks like that line, that line, that line. It basically uses the highlighters. You would highlight individual words in an article and then click the vocabulary button and it will create an automatic picture board with the word definition and a simple picture and a place for you to add notes. Um, so it's a very good time-saving tool that allows you to work smart um, and, and not hard. The Read and Write voice note tool allows you to leave an audio voice comment bubble on the side of your document uh, up to one minute long in Google Docs. And you could have multiple Google voice notes in your documents. So I use, I recommend this a lot as it, like if you're struggling with typing, you can leave your, like your voice leaving comments. Read and Write's word prediction tool, which looks like a little crystal ball because it's predicting your next word that you're going to type. It allows you to use predictive text lists based on the first few letters that you type in. So if you know what word you want to say, but you have struggle with spelling, it, you've you typed the first few letters and boom, it'll bring up a list that you could click on. So top down webs are graphic organizers that present topics and subtopics in a hierarchical way with, uh, using varied shapes and placement on the page to present the topics, the connections between the topics. And you can see my example here, you have a topic, subtopics, and you have details below that. So that is a top-down web. Um, another, uh, and then examples of top-down webs could be done in Google Slides or Inspiration, or there's a lot of MindMeister. There's a lot of other tools out there. Usually, um, Inspiration or Google Slides are the recommended tools to make good top-down webs. Um, word clouds, as you can see in the example here, are um, basically a tool that takes text. It takes a lot of text and puts it into a shape and it prioritizes words that are used more often in that article and helps with visualizing data, figuring out main ideas, and summarizing text. WordArt.com is an example of a word cloud creation tool that I highly recommend. It's so easy to use. You can sign up with Google, and you can use a lot of different shapes. And the, per, the best part of a word cloud is, again, if you're struggling with finding the main idea, this could help you look at the biggest words. Look to see if any of the words um, you don't know. So you can look them up before you read an article. After you've read the article, use a word cloud to help you summarize it because the most, the biggest words are the most important words and therefore you should talk about those more. Okay, so word clouds are great and they're an excellent tool for people, especially if you have reading comprehension issues. And the last tool on the list is RyQ. RyQ allows students to track how much they are writing before taking a pause or stopping. This is known as a writing burst. So, so how many words you could type without pausing for a few seconds. Um, it's also used by teachers to grade student writing and track your writing over time to see how much you're producing or um, how, mu how much your writing has changed over time. So it's a writing tracking tool as well as um, used by, by you individually to see how much you're producing over time as well. And that is the end of our notes. If you, once you get your notes done, guys, go ahead and turn these in. Thank you.